All we sim racers want to do is to get quicker. We train, we push, we repeat, but more often than not, we hit a wall, unsure how to gain any more time. Which is why you should learn how to read telemetry data. I just got into it recently and was shocked how much time I could gain per lap just by learning where my strengths were. Welcome back to Overtake.gg, my name is Champion Joe and today I take you on my personal journey on how I discovered telemetry data for myself and give you some input on how you could benefit from it too. If you are unfamiliar with the term telemetry, it's basically raw output data from your game on how your car is behaving on track corresponding to your inputs. Those squiggly lines show you exactly where you're braking how smooth you can operate the throttle and give you indicators on what to fine-tune on your setup. And I know it looks confusing, nerdy even, but trust me guys, nothing beats the straight facts when it comes to becoming a better racing driver. It's not a coincidence that telemetry is the number one resource tool for real-life racing when it comes to monitoring the car and driver and their performance. Because in the end, getting quick on track is always a game of repeating the same sequence of inputs over and over until you can do it with your eyes closed. Okay, maybe not that, but the point is that telemetry can help you understand what you're doing great on track and which habits you may have developed over time that actually make you slower. If you learned something new today, I would love you to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel and ring the bell for mobile notifications. But let's get started. To showcase telemetry data and learn how to read it, I'm using the VBOX Sim a software which you can find on Steam and that I got a free key for from the developers. This program helps you record telemetry data and simultaneously records your monitor so you can play back the data together with a video feed. But Webox is quite pricey. You don't have to use it. There are free alternatives out there. So if you are watching this and you are already a pro in reading telemetry data, let everybody know in the comments down below what software suits you. But don't get me wrong, VBOX is a great choice for sim races. Most games and tracks are compatible with it, so you can hop in and connect the boring looking graphs with actual gameplay. This helps massively when understanding what's happening on track, especially if you're a beginner. In the end, I decided to improve on ACC and the Belgian classic Solder. This is one heck of a hot lapping track, with many fast flowing corners as well as multiple hard braking zones and high curb chicanes that demand laser precision to prevail over. And I gave it my all in the new Audi GT3 Evo 2 that really suits my driving style, finding a 129.65 in the end within 11 laps. And now we move on to Circuit Tools, the VBOX program to reading out the data. And here we are. This is the user interface and we can see everything important here directly at a glance. On the top left, we have all of the 11 recorded laps. You can see in which lap I was fastest, where my best sector times were, and we can select different laps or sectors to compare them with each other. You can also click ideal here, then you get a summary of the best sectors so that you can always compare it with your optimal lap. In the bottom right, we can select which graphs to display. Here you can find basically everything you can imagine. I think that speed, the delta time, brake, throttle and steering angle are the most important. On the right, we have a preview of the graphs and these are mostly self-explanatory. If we compare two laps with each other, we can see exactly which braking point was better, where I stepped on the gas earlier and more gradually and where I lost or gained some time. So even though you don't have any data from a pro and you're only analyzing your own laps, you can learn a lot about yourself and the track by doing this. Sure, this analysis may not reveal two seconds of unrealized potential, but if you examine the right things, you can ultimately see in black and white why my 129.65 was better than all the 130 laps I did, which should, with some training and internalizing, lead to more constant lap times, and maybe even faster ones. And especially when you are learning a new track and you are not sure which brake markers are the best, which line through a turn makes the most sense, you can use this to create certainty. But let's not beat around the bush and do a concrete example of the Talamenborg T7, a tricky part that needs a lot of finesse. Okay, first we select our purple sector, now marked in red, 
and one where a ruined and otherwise even faster lap highlighted in blue. The second sector consists of two curved complexes. The second one is the infamous T7 chicane. So let's zoom in there, that we can see everything we need at first glance. All right, let's get started with the brake marker. I had a really set marker already in mind when driving, which is why both laps start with me stepping on the brakes almost at the same time. As this resulted in the best sector time, you can be sure that this was my best brake point that I found. But experimenting with your braking points can reveal even better ones in the data. But for now we can make out what worked, which is braking just before the skid marks that start here. The next difference spotted in the graphs is the slightly earlier turn-in during the faster lap. This will result in a better and more stable entry into the first part of the S. And you can see here there is less steering required in the end, which allowed me to release the brake earlier, resulting in a slight speed advantage. In the second part of the chicane, the biggest difference in time gain can be seen. But why is that? Higher minimum speed. Instead of killing the power completely over the inside curb, I merely reduced the throttle a little bit. This led to a 7 km per hour speed difference and a smoother throttle application in the end. In the last part of the Terlammen Bocht, I decided to slowly reduce the throttle again in the faster lap time to help the car stay stable over the following curb. The blue sector shows that the extra throttle did provide a speed overshoot and that the consequence was violent oversteer, which in the end cost yet more time. Half a second lost due to small driving errors. And after such an analysis, you know exactly what you did right and what you did wrong. Or at least what your potential best line is through T7. And I think that's a true eye-opener if you're preparing for an upcoming race. For me, this training resulted in a new best lap time and an overall better understanding of the track and my mistakes. Sure, there's still a lot to learn and track guides or hot lap videos on the internet can help you with that. But after you have analyzed your driving like that, you start to look differently on what others are doing. And in the end, you can try to copy what works for them and come back to the data to verify. I hope you like my little trip into telemetry data and why I think that every sim racer should start reading it. And if you need more tutorials on ACC, go and check out Ermin's traction control video here in the top right. But that's it from me today. Until next time, cheers.